Gather round, boys and girls. Today we're going to open up our Bibles to the New Testament and learn all about the Last Supper. Because there's only about four stories in this entire fucking testament, so we were bound to do this one eventually. Now, once upon a time there lived a man named Jesus. And we're quite certain about that despite the lack of first-hand sources, contemporary accounts, or a consistent historical record of basic facts about his life. And not only are we certain that he existed, we are also certain that he's the Son of God. Because it says so in the book where we learned about him in the first place. And it also says he had magic powers. So we're certain of that too. Of course, Jesus didn't do anything cool with his magic powers, like fighting crime or making furniture dance to shake Sonora. Instead, he used them to selectively heal a very small number of people that his dad condemned to the miserable life of a pre-scientific cripple in an area that only covered about 0.0001365% of the inhabited parts of Earth for a couple of years before voluntarily dying while almost all of the blind and lame people were still blind and lame. But somehow, the fact that he used his one-of-a-kind ability to effortlessly cure all ailments, to cure a couple of ailments, makes him the best person of all time. Even including the scientists to cure disabled people without the help of effortless magical powers. But not everybody loved Jesus, boys and girls. In fact, the people who were in power hated him because he challenged their religious authority. And how did those people wind up in power? Well, God did it on purpose with complete knowledge of what would happen when he instituted a power structure based entirely on family lineage. So the evil people that God intentionally put in charge decided that they needed to punish Jesus for making all these lame people walk and yanking so many demons out of people. Now, they could have just arrested him when he was walking around, but they decided not to because the crowds love him. Instead, they'd arrest him when he was alone and then count on the very same crowd that loved him to condemn him later in the story, even though that doesn't make any fucking sense. Well, to get Jesus when he was alone, they'd need an inside man. So they went to Judas, who probably told them that they could just follow Jesus home one day if they wanted to know where he was, since he was walking around town all day. But if they wanted to give him 30 pieces of silver to give them information that wasn't a secret, what the hell? So Judas agreed to betray Jesus. So one night, Jesus and all his disciples were having dinner when somebody let out a fart so raunchy that everyone on that side of the table decided to crowd together on the other side. And while they were all eating, Jesus told them that the bread was his body and that they should partake of it. But nobody took the hint that he was asking for a hummer. So instead, they just ate bread. And then Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And even though most biblical scholars will agree when I say that feet is often used in substitution for genitals in the Bible, they will most vociferously deny that applies here. So for the record, Jesus definitely didn't wash the apostles' dicks at the Last Supper even though it kind of sounds like he did in the Gospel of John. But this wasn't going to be just any old fun meal full of dick washing and nard cream, because Jesus also told the apostles that somebody there would betray him, which is a completely dick move if you're not going to tell them who it is at the same time, since the only thing you can possibly accomplish at that point is sowing distrust among your loyal followers. But he did it anyway. So sure enough, Judas told everybody he was just going to go to the vending machine while the mainframe compiled for a few minutes, but in reality, he was really going to go steal the DNA for all the dinosaurs and put them in a fake can of shaving cream. Or at least, that's what he would have done if this story was interesting. But it's not. So he just went and got some soldiers who came back and arrested Jesus. And then Jesus got brutally beaten and murdered so that God could forgive you for Eve eating a fruit. And everybody... Afterlife, happily ever after. The end.